the uh, fifth of our ride drills that we'll be demonstrating. And before the boys actually demonstrate the entire drill, we're going to take parts of it and demonstrate those parts. The first thing I want to show is uh, a counter to uh, leg grape. As Andy has inserted a leg grape on my left leg, and he's secured an underhook on the other side. And what I'm going to do is counter move him. This is just one of several counters to a leg grape. I'm going to bring my hand across toward my other hand. I don't want to bring it down underneath my body because I don't gain sufficient leverage on his arm that way. So I bring my hand across toward my other hand. At the same time, I would be bringing my knee in so I can fold to my hip. Now once I get down to my hip, I secure wrist control with one hand and then change off and get it with the other hand a little better to free up this arm so I can complete the counter. Move. I want to take my knees and put a pinch on my partner's leg so that he will not be in a position to change off to a double grapevine. If I didn't have that pinch, he could come into double grape position and I'd be in very bad trouble. So I put a pinch on his leg with my knees and at this point I want to do a backstroke, much like in swimming, to put pressure on his shoulder, still holding his wrist. I backstroke and as I come out, I come up into a leg hook position, or if I were a boot man, I could have come up into a leg break position. So that's one portion of the drill. The second portion will involve a counter two leg hook. If the man hooks my leg, as has been done, and he happens to loop my arm, which is a possibility, what I can do from here is sit inside and do a drag bypass. So what it, would, what it would amount to is I would bring my knee across to the inside and right here I'm going to hook his arm, I don't grab it with my hand, I just hook it and I'm going to swing through and do a little drag on that arm. So I bring my leg all the way through and get into drag bypass position. Now drag bypass position involves me putting this instep behind my partner's knee, putting this foot over his near leg so that he will not be able to come across me with either a near leg step over or a high leg over action. That would be high leg over. So I'll have him blocked off with one foot and with the other. And I'm gonna drive him toward his face, drive him straight ahead, so as to make it easier for myself to swing out from under him. So I drive, using the arm around a hamstring, Drive him forward, drive him forward, and work my way out into my own leg hook grip. And if in the process, in the process of doing that drag bypass, while I'm in that bypass position, if my opponent is in a state of mind where he's going to definitely come across me with high leg over action, I can change off to a crab ride. We do not do this in this particular drill, but it is a possibility, so I'll demonstrate it. And it does crop up in another one of our ride drills where we do change off to a crab ride. So I'm gonna get back into drag bypass. When my partner comes into me with high leg over, what I'm gonna do is slide out from under him, I hip away from him, and change it to a waist wrap instead of a leg grab with my arm. And now I have crab ride. I have one foot under his one leg, I have the other foot under his other leg, and I would naturally seek hand control right away so that he can't come up and grab my head. So if it's going to be a factor, the high leg over action of your partner, you can change off from drag bypass to crab ride. You have to go up and get the waist instead of staying on the leg. And the purpose of that is so that you can rotate the man's hips onto your lap. And of course then you have to move out from under him a little bit so that his hips don't get across you, but in fact land right smack on your lap. 
so you will have the prayer right. He's trying to get his hips across, and you have to prevent that. And to prevent it, as I say, you move your hips away, slide them away laterally, and rotate his body so that his body falls into your lap. One more time, we'll do just that. I'm in the drag bypass. My partner's gonna come across me with high leg over. I go to his waist so I can rotate his hips. I scoop so that he will land in my lap. And I have prayer by it. Okay. So we'll have the boys come out and they will demonstrate the full drill, which does not involve that ladder movement. It involves the drag bypass, but not the shifting into a uh, crab ride. All right? All right, the top man will block the near arm and insert a near grape as he is done, secures a far underhook, and now that bottom man will begin to counter. Same leg grape counter that was demonstrated earlier. Puts the pinch on the leg, does the backstroke, and comes up. Now when he gets up into position, he'll loop the arm so that an inside drag can be executed. It has been near to fully executed now, and a far grape will be inserted so that the same drill can be repeated from the opposite side. We now have a grapevine on the other leg. Same man on top, but he started with a grape on the other leg. There's the backstroke counter to grape. Here comes the inside drag bypass counter to the leg hook. Okay, now they have to uh, invert in order for each boy to do each part of the entire drill. There's a grape being inserted, the underhook, the beginning of the drag, the beginning of the uh, backstroke counter to leg grape. Here comes a leg hook, loop it in your arm. There's the drag. A far grape will be inserted at this point. Underhook secured, and the beginning of the backstroke counter has been initiated. Here's the loop of the near arm. Here comes the counter to the leg hook, a little drag movement. Okay, and the drill is completed with each boy being on top and each boy doing all parts of the move. All right, we're gonna do ride drill number six now. And in this drill, we'll have the boys take you through it uh, at certain spots their first time through. Perhaps we'll stop them to illustrate something, or at least we'll slow them down. Now the top man, Matt Seuss, has inserted a near grape. And what he's gonna do next is he's gonna post when Andy Buckley, the bottom man, folds toward his right hip. Andy's gonna go down toward his right hip, and Matt is gonna bring his knee over here and not fall down, he's gonna keep his base. Now, the bottom man is gonna go back up to his base, and he's gonna fold toward his other hip, and our top man has brought his foot way back to act as a post so that he will not lose his balance. And in the drill, we allow a loss of balance at this point by removing the post, and we use a cross face to go with the momentum of that bottom end. And we bring our hips up on top. When you're a leg wrestler, you wanna have a tendency to keep your hips higher than your opponent's hips. Now in the drill, the next portion involves a reverse cross face. The elbow is brought back against the side of Andy's face, and that brings uh, Andy across Matt's body, and at this point, Andy will recover his base and Matt will climb back up on top. Now to complete the drill, we turn and face the shoulders of our bottom man, get our hands behind his arms, and then use pressure with both legs. One foot is in a position, in step inside the lower portion of our partner's leg, and on the other side we have a leg break still, and between pressing outward with this foot and straightening our leg break leg a little bit, 
and then bumping those arms from inside and behind, we were able to create enough pressure to stretch our man out to his stomach. The natural completion to three-quarter stretcher, which was the action that was just taken upon the bottom man, is a bar and Elsa. In our drill, we don't actually go to this. We do demonstrate it at this moment to indicate that it is the follow-up movement once you get the man stretched out on his stomach. In the drill, we just complete by getting him on his stomach. In another drill that involves three-quarter stretcher, a pin drill, we do complete by using the bar and Elson. The boys will face another direction, and as they face this other direction, the bottom man will have a grape come in on the opposite side this time. And uh, the bottom man will now fold toward his hip, come back up, fold toward his other hip, We'll relinquish that post, cross face and go with. Reverse the cross face, put pressure to bring the man over the other way. Climb back up on top and begin the three quarter stretcher action. Okay. Now the top man has been on top, both on the left and on the right. What they will do now is invert and do the exact same drill from an inverted position. Andy Buckley on top, whereas he was on bottom previously. And we'll have them just go through the drill slowly. Same features as before. Put posted, relinquish the post, cross face and go in. Reverse cross face, climb back up, change off the three quarter stretcher, and bring the man down to the mat. The top man has to get to the other side. So in order for the drill to be done to completeness, it has to be that each boy is top and bottom, and each boy is on each of the two sides that he could be on at the very beginning, initiating the action. All right, now this is the last of our ride drills. This is another leg ride drill. Uh, we do not put a heavy emphasis on leg grapevine. We don't really wish for our people to use leg grapevine to any great degree because our experience of life has been that when a man uses leg grapevine and gets himself reversed, at least 80% of the time, not only will he get reversed, but he'll get reversed to his back. And so we would prefer our people to put leg grade vine at the end of the list of things that they should learn. On the other hand, it's also true that to be the complete wrestler, you have to know how to use your legs in all ways. And since we do put an emphasis on leg hook ride and crab ride, we certainly ought to, in terms of uh, completing the wrestler, we ought to put uh, some emphasis on the uh, leg grapevine and all that can be done from it. So we have these drills to help ourselves. All right, a leg grapevine has been inserted. And what I'm gonna do first is do a demonstration of one little segment of the drill. And then we'll have the boys do the complete drill. Now this little portion involves me getting into a uh, high leg over action against the grapevine and getting to the other side. Instead of doing backstroke, which involved me going to my left here, I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm gonna bring this knee across in front and I've gotta get across to the other side of my partner. So what I'm gonna do is put my shoulder to the mat and Use some high leg over action to get to the other side. Now there are two ways to operate from here. I could grab the knee, pull it toward me, stretch my leg and break the grape. The bad feature of doing that is that as I free my leg here, my partner might whip his leg across into double grape and I'd be in worse trouble. So instead of using that particular movement, which is a possibility, what we 
normally you uh, tend to do is not that particular uh, action. Instead of pulling on the knee, I'm gonna push on the knee. I push downward, and as I push down, I work my ribs up my partner's rib cage. Keep working up. And the purpose of that is to make it difficult for my partner to bend around me and hide. If I stay down here and try to reach back for his head, it'll be tough to get to. I just can't get to his head because he keeps bending around me. So what I do is I push on the knee, work my body up his rib cage, and now it's a little more difficult for him to bend around my body. And when I come back in here for his face, I get a cross face just above the nose. And from here, what I want to do is come up into a Jacobson ride. I have the leg rate myself now, and I have the head. The great, the great and the head, or the great and the arm, constitutes a Jacobson ride. Now in the drill, we use the uh, uh, arm. Uh, in uh, the modern trend in wrestling, more often than not, the arm is not grabbed because of the possible dry counter movement to the uh, grip, the head is grabbed. But in our drill, even though it's a little behind the times in that sense, we take the arm, much like a wizard group grip, much like the wizard grip, and much like the uh, uh, Turk grip that we would normally have to complete Turk. I make sure my knee is on the other side of my partner's legs so that he can't scoot out easily and do drag action. All right, that portion of the drill has been demonstrated, and what we'll do now is have the boys perform the entire drill. They'll start with a leg grape bind, Insertion of a leg grade bind. Okay, now the boys are going to demonstrate the drill in its entirety, start to finish. A near grape has been inserted on the bottom man, and that bottom man is going to do high leg over action to get to the other side of his partner. So he begins getting across him. Now he's going to push on the knee. Work his ribs up, his partner's ribs, and get a cross face above the uh, bridge of the nose. He comes up with a uh, uh, Jacobson grip, and now the man that's underneath is going to do a little slip drag action. At this point, we have a high leg over going to be attempted, but the other man changed off to crab ride. And now in the drill, we throw a grape in with our other leg so that the entire sequence can be done from the opposite side, same man on top. Here comes the high leg over action, the push on the knee, the cross face, the Jacobson grip, a little slip drag action initiated, high leg over with a change off the crab ride, and now a grape would be inserted again if we care to continue to drill in that manner. But what we do in actual practice sessions is we have the boys invert at this moment so that the man that was on bottom, now being on top, gets to do all parts of the drill and vice versa for the man that's now on bottom. There's the high leg over, push on the knee, work up the rib cage and cross face. Little slip drag initiated. High leg over, change off the crab ride, and now great bind with the other leg so that we can finish the drill with that top man in his final top position. And the drill is finally completed. And these seven ride drills that we have just demonstrated uh, offer our people a great opportunity to practice wrestling sequences. Now these are not the only movements that could be uh, good wrestling movements within sequences that would appear much like this. But these are sequences we think that are worthwhile sequences that uh, can help the boy learn to chain wrestling. And that's what it's all about.
you really have to develop an ability to program ahead and keep continuous movement out there on the mat uh, and try to be ahead of your opponent mentally so you have some idea of what he's about to do next and some idea of what you could do to beat him to the punch or to counter move him when he does do or attempts to do what he, is, uh, uh, what he has in mind. Now the next set of drills that we'll demonstrate are our pin drills. They're great in number and uh, we're pretty uh, proud of the fact that they've uh, helped us develop quite a few people that have had an ability to turn people to their backs. I think the drills have been instrumental, certainly, and uh, we'll begin to demonstrate those pin drills in just one moment. All right, this first drill, this first of our pin drills, begins with me getting a wrist back. Now, in our terminology, wrist back means that I've gotten this wrist and somehow pulled it alongside my partner and then broken him down. I can do that in a couple of ways. I can simply go up there and pull on it, or I could just freeze it where it is and drive my head into his upper arm, that is drive him over his hand by doing this, driving forward and getting that wrist back. Now the first movement in the drill, in the pin drill, is what we call solid. I take the arm that's around the body, I wrap deeply above the elbow so it's legal. It's at the elbow, it's illegal. So I want to get above the elbow and I want to get deep. Don't want just my fingers on the arm. I want to get deep on that arm. There are different ways to complete the pin grip from here, but the most basic way for us is to pull that arm under and at the same time drive our shoulder into our partner's chest area. Take our knee, this knee, keep it close to his butt so he can't execute an elevator, which is about the only thing that's available to him to counter move him. Now once we've gotten him onto his back with a full Sullivan grip, we allow him to rotate toward his stomach and we loosen on the waist. And we let go of the upper arm and we even loosen a little bit on the waist area so that he can rotate toward his stomach. And then we go into the second portion of the sequence. The second portion is what we call Mills pin and it involves a, a, a little duck under action. I'm about to duck under my bottom man's near arm here at the elbow. Now I want to duck under at the elbow rather than the shoulder because he's very strong up in this area and can hold his uh, shoulder down a lot easier than he can hold his arm down. So I want to get under at the elbow area where I'll have a little more leverage. So at this point, what I'm going to do, having let him turn toward his stomach, I'm going to put my head under that arm at the elbow and sit my legs to the front. The purpose of that is it makes it very difficult for him to bring his arm down now because I've got my whole body under it, not just my head any longer. Now from here, what we would do in competition is release, and although a lot of people would shoot a half Nelson here, we would prefer to go for two upper arms. We kind of come in here and get two upper arms, pin grip, and finish up the uh, pin grip, the Mills pin with the two upper arms uh, tie-up. The reason why we don't go for half Nelson is very often when you shoot it, your arm gets caught under his neck and if the other man bridges and goes with you and has a very strong bridge, he can take you right on over to your back. Two upper arms is a lot safer as a pin grip and uh, equally effective as compared with half Nelson. Now in the drill, I don't really complete the mills. I just get this far and then I back off. Once I've backed off, I take the uh, arm and put it on my hip and I get either a wrist bar or one-on-one -on, -one on the other side or I take an underhook on that side. And I take my hips and go under this arm rather than my head and I put my knee on the far side of my opponent. In other words, I'm going to put my knee on the far side of his head. Once I've gotten that far, I back off. And in the drill, I would continue around onto the other side of my partner and work my body under his body a little bit to complete the pin grip. 
Now, once I've gotten to this stage, I allow my partner to rise. And as he comes up, once he gets enough altitude, I sit through to the front, and I don't bring him backwards over his feet. I bring him across my body. By bringing him over his feet, I could injure him, plus his feet act as braces against that movement. I bring him across my body with hard motion, and once I get him across, I turn away and bring his two arms toward one another. I've got him trapped. Now in the drill, we let him kick back across to the other side. We let him come back toward his base, and we let him have our leg, and we let him have our wrist. And he's gonna start what is called the wrist leg roll. And just as he starts into it, I do high leg over. I take this leg and do a little high leg over action. And as soon as I've done that much, I sit through and bring his arms toward one another. I've got his two arms trapped behind his back, and this is a pin grip that is very difficult to get out of and very punishing to the man that's in it, as well as being very effective in terms of actually pinning him. And that's the actual completion of the drill. So it involves a full Sullivan grip. It involves what we call a Mills pin. We initiate it, we don't fulfill it. It involves what we call a bucky pin, where I bring my hip under his arm and get my knee to the other side of his head. It involves a full whip over, and then it involves a counter to wrist leg roll. Now we're gonna have the two boys demonstrate the move in its entirety one more time in slow motion, and we'll try to talk them through it. The bottom man is on his hip, and we're going to secure a wrist back. Once the wrist is back, we'll work to get a full Sullivan grip, legal and full, and put him over on his back with leverage. We let him rotate back toward his stomach, loosen on the waist, and do a little duck under, under the arm, get our whole body under by sitting to the front a little bit. Now we back off and put that hand on our hip. Instead of our head going under the arm, our hips are going to walk to the front under that arm until we can get a knee on the other side of our partner's head. This is the bucky. This is what we call bucky pin. Now we come back, and once we're back on our base, we allow our partner to rise to his knees. When he's fully up, we sit to the front and do a whip over. Turn away from him to complete it. Now we allow him to kick back over in the drill. Once on the other side, he secures a wrist and a leg and begins slowly to initiate wrist leg roll. We do a little high leg over action and switch hips and trap the man's two arms behind his back. And the drill is completed. That's pin drill number one. All right, now this second pin drill begins with a two-on-one ride. I'm gonna have my partner's wrist in two hands. I start, I get that wrist with two hands, and I pull it under him and put pressure on his upper arm. I'm gonna press my elbow down toward the mat, and that brings pain to him. And while that pain's lingering, oftentimes a half Nelson will open up on the other side. Now, I don't want to stay on this side. I want to get to that other side. So I jump across to the other side, and I run the half. I come around toward the front. That's what we call running the half, getting around toward the front of the man. Now, in the drill, we back off. We get half Nelson and far wrist bar. And what I do is I put my knee, my one knee in front of my partner's knee so he can't crawl forward and then I swing him around in front toward his back. Now, naturally, I would take him the rest of the route and put him on his back if this were competition. But in the drill, we let him come back up, and now what we do is let him brace against this pressure by putting his foot out to the side and kind of sitting away so that I can't really swing him to the front and I can't turn him to his back in any way. And so we go to our next movement, which is a snap back. I'm going to crawl backwards a little bit, release the two grips I now have, and grab two underhooks and snap them to me. 
So I back off and I snap them down. Uh, in the drill, we let them rise again. We get the half Nelson and wrist bar. He stands up and I get up with him. From here, I'm gonna take my leg and sweep backwards to sweep his leg back. And as I do that, I'll bring him to the mat and circle toward his head to get away from his hips so I don't go over him. So I sweep his near leg back. And as he goes downward, I come around to the front so as not to lose control. And we let him come back up. And he's resisting this same pressure again. And I'm a little bit behind him. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him back onto my lap. I'm going to fold under him, pull him onto my lap, and change off to a pin grip, which we call the screamer. It's a very punishing pin grip, as the name would imply. And if you can get it on a man, it's pretty definite that you'll get the pin. You'll also get punished in the process. So I've got the wrist bar, I've got the half, but I don't feel like I'm going to be able to affect a, uh, a dump to the back from here. So what I do is I pull the man back onto me, onto my body axis, and at this juncture, I, I would normally take the momentum I've already created by pulling him back onto me, and I'm going to bridge, and as I bridge, I'm going to change off to his arms area here at the crooks of his arms and try to get the screamer in. So I bridge and change off to screamer pin grip. Okay? All right, that ladder movement, just that last portion, we'll try again to give a better idea, maybe from a slightly different angle, what exactly we're going to do. I've got the wrist bar, I've got the hand, and I don't feel in a position where I'm able, going to be uh, effective uh, in dumping him to his back. So I take and I pull him back onto me, and as he comes onto my body, what I want to do is release on the wrist, release on the head, and go toward his arms. Now I have to get him off my lap. So the momentum that I created as I pulled him onto me should have been utilized. But what we've done here is we've stopped in order just to explain. But what I'd normally want to do is bridge him off, and as he goes off, I take and trap his two arms behind him in what is called a screen and just wait for the referee to slap the mat. All right, now we'll have the two boys demonstrate that very same drill, same sequence, and we'll see if we can't talk them through it. All right, number one, we have a two-on-one grip. We use some pressure with our forearm to open up a half Nelson. We jump to the other side and run it. Now we let him come back toward his base. We keep the half Nelson, we keep the one-on-one, -on -one, the wrist bar, and we put our knee in front of his leg and swing him around in front to his back. And we let him come back to base. And this time, the bottom hand sits away to resist our pressure with the half Nelson. So we change off to a double underhook and a snap back, going back with that little bit to allow opening for our partner to fall. We let him come back to base. Get our wrist bar in half one more time. We let him stand, and we do a near leg sweep back, toss him to his back, and move toward the head. And then in the final stage, and we'll wish that they continue all the way through without stop, we're going to have the top man just pull his partner back onto his body, bridge using the moment, the momentum that's already been created, and then change off to a screamer. This is the screamer pin grip, and it's pretty potent. Very difficult to get out of. Hurts a bit, more than a bit actually, and also is an effective pin. All right, our next pin drill begins with reach around wrist grip. The top man will sweep that arm in and get the reach around grip. And now he's gonna circle and get what we call fish hook. From the rear crotch area, he reaches in and gets a wrist. That's the fish hook grip. From here, he's going to shoot a half Nelson with his free hand and put his partner over on his back. 
Now he lets them rise in the drill. And now he's going to use a back hook along with the fish hook and cheap tilt his partner to his back. We let the man come back and we're going to shoot another half Nelson just to show that half Nelson is the better of those two complementary movements. The cheap tilt will get near four points, the half Nelson will get you a pin grip, a true pin grip and actually a pin probably. Alright, now in the drill, the top man swings to the other side and changes his fish hook. He's got it with the other hand. He's going to push down on his partner's head and stack it. Now, this is a very dangerous position, that tuck position, so you've got to be careful whenever you do it to a, a, a partner or, a, or an opponent. The bottom man is going to go through, the top man has to cartwheel to stay in a control position. Now he's going to press down on the head to get the man on bottom to raise the head up. When the head comes up, that's the signal to go across and get the far arm. Now we have fish hook and pure forearm, and our top man has gotten chest on chest, feet spread, he's up on his toes, no knees touching the mat. And fish hook and uh, forearm, or fish hook and half Nelson are both very potent penguins. They're difficult to get on advanced wrestlers, and on college freestyle wrestlers, but at high school level, Fish hook pin series is a worthwhile series to know. All right, we'll have them do it one more time, and we'll have them invert so that the other man gets an opportunity to execute that same sequence. It starts with the reach around wrist grip, he circles, it's fish hook, puts a half Nelson in, simulates the pin. Let's his partner come back and tilt away where he wouldn't be able to dump them the half. Now he does a cheap tilt. Partner comes back, doesn't want to be tilted, so the half Nelson's available again. Partner comes back up, you circle, get the fish with the other hand, push the head down and put him in a stack position. Then as he goes through the stack position, we cartwheel, stay in control, push down on the head, come under the face, forearm. A lot of weight on the opponent's chest and no weight other than on his chest except for what little is on our own toes. Alright, this next pin drill begins with a reach around wrist grip again and we're going to get a tight bar along with that reach around wrist grip. Now the top man's going to put his knee in front of his partner's knee, trip him, stack him. Try to hold him there. In the drill, we let him come back down, we let him go to his stomach. We release on the wrist and get the other wrist. We get a one on one on the other wrist. Now, from here, we're going to pull that wrist under so that it doesn't act as a bit of resistance to what we want to do next. And what we want to do next is drive towards the far rear and shoulder and then run it around toward the head. That's tight bar pry in our terminology. Now the bottom man's going to rotate, and the top man has gone around the head to come in behind his partner. And it's very important that a wrestler learn to go around that head and come in behind, because if you try to come behind on the same side that you were on initially, oftentimes you get caught up in your opponent's hip rotation and you go to your own back. So very frequently when losing a pin grip, it's vital, if you care to contain, uh, retain control, it's vital that you go around your partner or opponent's head. Now from here, the top man will sweep the far arm, crook of the arm, sweep it back and get a tight bar. He catches his uh, opponent at a relaxed moment. And he gets a wrist bar on the near side. He pulls it out and up in the air so he can drive his knee under it so that he can let go of the wrist and either get a half Nelson or secure an underhook. Now with the half Nelson or underhook, he runs it to the front. A lot of leverage there to rotate the opponent, the partner in this case, onto his back. Now we let the bottom man turn back to his gut, we get in behind him, we sweep his other arm back, and we lock our hands so that we can work what we call double bar pry. 
and he's going to drive toward the far ear or shoulder before he starts running the head. You want to drive forward on an angle first. So. Alright, this time what we'll do is we'll have the top man fail to drive toward that far ear and shoulder. And in his failing, he's going to get caught up in a counter move by the bottom man to show the importance of that drive toward far ear and shoulder. So the bottom man was able to uh, rotate in and sit up a little bit. And if he now hip voice, he'll probably, if he can free his arms, be able to reverse his partner and maybe even catch him on his back. So it's very important when you do a, a, a tight bar cry or a double tight bar cry that you drive toward the far rear and shoulder and drive hard that direction before you run the head. If you start to get anxious in terms of rotating the man to his back a little bit too early, that bottom man, if he knows the counter move and has ability to execute it, can reverse you and perhaps reverse you to your own back. All right, the next drill that we'll do is called Navy Lift Pin Drill. And what we'll do is we'll demonstrate the various options that are available when we're going to have a, a man in Navy grip and we want to put him on his back. Now the first thing is Navy ride, which is often called lace ride by some uh, uh, wrestling uh, teams, involves an arm around the waist and another arm in here between his legs in the crotch area. I don't want my elbow up in the air because if the man rotates right now and uses leg force, he'll hyperextend my arm. That would injure me. So I want my elbow down, just about touching the mat or touching the mat. I don't want my forearm pointing up along his body axis because although I wouldn't get hurt, I wouldn't have the leverage to resist his rotation. So I want my forearm perpendicular to his body axis. I want my elbow down near to flush on that mat or actually on the mat. Now I want my knees not back, I want my knees up under me because I'm gonna raise up and I wanna be balanced. I don't wanna be overextended. Now some people teach to lock hands and lift, we do not. What we might do as an aid is put our hand on the other man's leg. One of the reasons why we don't like to lock hands is people that lock their hands have a tendency not to wanna unlock them and everything's timing on this in terms of getting the pin grip in. So what I want to do is either keep my hand back here if I'm able to lift this way or if I need help in the lift I'll put my hand on his upper leg and pull a little bit kind of try to rotate him a little bit. In any event I want to lift and the bottom hand we let him resist and what I want to do eventually is after I've pulled that leg to me kind of making a bicep here I put my elbow up in the air a little bit. If I leave my elbow down, he can rotate back and I'll lose my balance. Okay? But once I get him this far, if I bring my elbow just up that little bit, it's tough for him to rotate. Now my next move, and it's the first move in the drill actually, is I try to snake my hand in here and I want to close the open. I want to move my body in tight to him, or at least simulate it, and that's all we require in a drill is that we simulate that movement so that the man doesn't slip his hand back through that opening. So I would snake my hand in for a reverse Nelson and then close the opening. The second portion of the drill involves the bottom man rotating in toward me with his hand in the air where he's wide open for a half Nelson. And again, I have to close the opening because if I don't, he'll take his hand and slip back through. The third portion of the drill involves him, in this case, he's gonna have his hand in tight to his body. We'll have him turn back to the outside again first. And I'm rotating him, or he's rotating himself actually, but he's a little smarter this time. He doesn't have his hand in the air where I can get the half Nelson in. He has his hand tight to his own body where I can't get it in. So what we do is we apply what we call a false head. I just go over his collar, much like I would on a half Nelson, and I let go of this knee and grab the bottom knee, not the hamstring. I want to get down on that knee. And the reason why I want the knee rather than the hamstring 
is that up in the hamstring area, he's a little extra strong. And if I were to try to cradle him, grabbing in the hamstring area, he might be strong enough to avoid the cradle or to break it. Whereas if I grab at the knee area on my wrap, I should be able to lock hands and I should be able to keep those hands locked. I have now what is called ideal RC, ideal reverse cradle, because I have the bottom leg rather than the top leg of my opponent. And it's much tougher for the man that's in this grip to rotate back to base, considering the fact I have his bottom knee rather than his top knee. Either way, reverse cradle's a great pin grip, but the bottom knee is the better knee to have if ever you can get it. The next portion of the drill, the fourth little segment here, the bottom man takes his arm and he puts it up on my back. And that is a common occurrence when you're looking for the cradle. When you drop down here and you'd like to get a cradle, the man will kind of put his arm up on your body and it helps him resist your bending his face down toward his knee. Or it helps break the cradle if it hasn't really been locked up tight. So what we do is we change off to our next movement. I take the arm that's around the head, hook his arm, much like on a wizard, and I do what we call a naz. A naz to us is simply that I take my knee and put it on the other side of his head. Now once my knee gets on the other side of his head, he's trapped. He's not gonna be able to rotate off his back. To complete the pin, we do inverted reverse headlock. I keep this arm here, I let go down in the crotch area, and I grab the head, and I lock my hands underneath his neck. Now actually, it's a very loose grip in the sense that there's a big opening inside my arm lock. However, it's very tough to get out of, extremely tough to get out of, and offers a great pin grip. It will truly pin. Now what I do here to actually pin the man is this. If he's rotating outward, he's rotating away from me, I just put my head down here and hold him. If he rotates in, I put my head up in his uh, far uh, abdomen area and push to try to push him back. If he tries to bridge, I just pick up on his head in the neck area. And so you can stop the two basic rotations and you can stop the bridge and eventually you'll wear your opponent down. I stay parallel to my opponent, or partner in this case. I don't want to come around perpendicular. The grip loses its effectiveness if I come perpendicular. So what I do is I stay right where I am, have my knee up just in case there's trouble. I can come back up to my base, get back to my own knees, and I just tire them in just by keeping the grip. He rotates out, my head's down. He rotates in, my head's up in that far abdomen area. He tries to bridge, I don't let him. I just pick up on the neck. If I care to change off to anything, it might be ideal RC. When he rotates in toward me, oftentimes his leg comes close enough, I could change to a cradle. But in our Navy lift pin series, that's not part of the scene. That crops up in another pin drill. So it starts out, Navy grip, I lift, I get my elbow up that little bit, I insert the reverse Nelson by snaking my hand in, close the opening. He turns in toward me, hand in the air, half Nelson, close the opening. He turns in toward me, hand close to the body, false half, my DOR safe. All I have to do in the drill is touch my fingers. The final stage, he puts his arm up on my back, I overhook, I do a NAS action, get my knee to the other side of his head, and then I finish up by getting inverted reverse headlock. Okay. We'll do Granby pin series of, uh, uh, our Granby pin drill series, and that involves my having what we call the actual Granby pin. Now in Granby pin, I have a wrist, I have a leg. And if I could pin the man with this grip, or control him sufficiently to get a three-point near fall, I'd probably stay with what I have. 
However, if he rotates in toward me, it offers me an opportunity sometimes to take and grab his wrist with my other hand. Now, I never let go with the one hand until I get it secure with the other hand. I work my hand on there real good before finally I let go. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to come up and take the head, grab my own knee, and then semi-stack my partner, trying to shift all his weight toward his shoulders area to pin him. Then we come back to our basic pin position, Bramby pin grip position. The next portion of the drill involves the man rotating out this time. Now, I wouldn't change off unless I felt I needed to or felt that it would better my position to change off. But what I can do here is take his hand and post it, let go of the legs, grab that wrist with the other hand now, and come across and dive my hand under the armpit and get a far, far uh, underhook there on his arm. And I change to what we call two upper arms pin grip. I'm going to bring this foot nearest the head up as a post and go into pin grip position. Then I come back into our standard position. And this time, my partner decides he's going to come up and scissor my head. He wants to do one of these numbers on me and keep me from pinning him or from getting near fall. So what I have to do is I have to anticipate that that's coming. And as it comes, I release on the leg, on the one leg and grab the other, release on the wrist and go under his head. Now what I can do from here is either flip all the way across him, if I have that ability, or I can run the head. That is, I just go around his head and I'll wind up with a reverse cradle when I get in on the other side. I have ideal RC on my partner on that far side. Whereas we did the Navy drill twice, myself demonstrating each time, and the Granby pin drill once, we'll have the uh, uh, two boys do the Granby pin drill a second time so that it is on tape to be witnessed at least twice. All right, this is the basic position now. Wrist grip, leg grip. Man on bottom's gonna rotate in. Top man gets the wrist with the other hand very securely, then takes the head, his own knee, does a semi-stack. Comes back to his basic pin grip, Granby pin grip, bottom man rotates out. We post the wrist, change to the, uh, grip the wrist with the other hand now, and then change to two upper arms high. Come back to basic pin grip position, Ramby pin grip position. Man tries to come up and scissor our head. We anticipate, grab the knee, reach under the collar, and either flip to the other side or run the head. And on that other side, we will have the ideal RC.